fire up another draft here. So again, let's try to attack. We saw how good twos were. Um, I'm not sure how to play the other side of the format quite yet, but we want if we're going to play a defensive deck, we want ways to repeatedly uh, blank creatures with power two, three, um, and get value off of killing them. But that's tough to do because a lot of the the twos are, uh, you know, pretty good. Okay, well, best card in the set? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I mean. I haven't beaten it when it's in play. Trick is, can we get it into play? And what kind of a deck are we trying to draft to make that happen? Probably not going to be a red-white aggro deck. Probably not. Getting to eight mana doesn't usually happen there. Green, yeah. Uh, Palladium mirror in, in you know mid-range deck, sure. Blue-black control, maybe. Uh, Green-black mid-range, sure. So those those are the... I think the types of decks we're going to try to 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 draft towards to make this guy good. Uh, but we also just have to sort of take what the packs are giving us. So Idle of Endurance is a card I would want to take once I had an aggressive white deck. I don't know if you want to start with this. I mean, I guess we know if we're drafting white, we're going to have a bunch of three or less creatures. But if you draw this early, it's not going to do much. So sit in your hand because you got to wait until your your graveyard's full before you uh, go ahead and play that. We could just take a short sword here. It's colorless. Delay the decision kind of thing. Uh, Siege Striker we saw was quite strong in a red-white go-wide deck. It's not what Ugin is trying to do, though. And I guess if we're trying to draft towards Ugin, we want to try to draft towards Ugin. But, I mean, there's not really much sending us in a particular direction out of this pack. I guess let's take the sword. It, it, it's it got some game in like a green mid-range kind of deck. All right, Invigorating Surge I'm not, not super interested in. Certainly good with Conclave Mentor, but otherwise... I mean, otherwise it's three mana, plus two, plus two at instant speed. Actually, it's, it's a totally fine card. I shouldn't talk it down. Um, 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 well, we could take Prismite. That's, I don't think we're willing to, to stoop to that. Not that I won't play Prismite. Prismite is totally fine, but let's take the Mentor. See what comes. Maybe we don't end up playing Ugin. If, if we can't get any, um, you know, black, blue, green type cards, then we might not be able to do it, but we can see playing Ugin in a green-white deck. And as such, uh, Visionary is pretty nice, gets us closer to playing Ugin via the ramp it provides and the card draw it provides to draw Ugin and draw the lands we need to cast Ugin. So pretty clear pick here over Sanctum. Sanctum's similar effect, but it doesn't draw you a card. So I think a pretty easy visionary here. There's also a rise again, which I guess we could try to bias towards, but with a, with a mentor in our pile, we would like to be green. Oh boy, here's a pick. Cultivate or Drowsing Pteranodon. In the in the Conclave Mentor deck, Pteranodon, pretty good. Cultivate, pretty good at getting you up to 8 mana, though. And uh, keeps us open to maybe playing black or three colors or whatever. So we'll, we'll grab the Cultivate here. Some decent black in this pack. I think we'd, think we'd be on Deathbloom Thalid at this point over Finishing Blow. Not sure if, if those have flipped yet in, in priority. But I still think Cultivate is where we want to be. We've got some good green. We've got a card that wants us to ramp. I'm in for this start. This is exciting. Might be the only time we see this guy, so let's make it count on our side of the battlefield anyway. It's not our opponents are sure sure to have it a bunch, but Alrighty, so we're looking at Pegasus is a two drop that can get augmented with a plus one plus one counter. I like that more than Battalion. Definitely more than Mutt. Capture Sphere is a removal spell that's okay. Good, not great. But I mean, if we end up blue green, we'll be happy to have one of these. And some black cards we're not interested in. This is a great red two drop, but 
Um, with Conclave Mentor, I would lean towards the Pegasus as our, as our two-drop of choice. And then there's this Dilophosaur, which I think is okay. I don't think it's that good. So, yeah, I mean, given that we have the Mentor, I think I want the Pegasus. I think it's between Pegasus and Capture Sphere. White's got some okay removal we can hope to lean on with uh, Faith's Fetters. Maybe we can grab. And, I mean, we just take a dog. Again, totally fine if we can get some um, stuff going with uh, plus one, plus one counters. Or we could take the Sanctum. There's one already in this pack that we could wheel. We've got Cultivate, so a multicolor Sanctum deck is not out of the question. But I don't think that's more powerful than just following this green-white thing that's happening. The Kraken's not bad either, though. If we'd taken the Capture Sphere, we'd be pretty interested in this Kraken, wouldn't we? I'm going to take the Dog. But Kraken with Cultivate and Visionary might be the way to go. But again, let's, let's attack people. Attacking people is good. We already have a Short Sword. We could just take a second one. Uh, or we could take a makeshift battalion, which is pretty nice with the mentor. Maybe we'll just do that. A little bit of synergy there. If it gets the counter, it gets a second one. 5-4 is uh, nothing to sneeze at. I mean, we could just mize Ugin and maybe sometimes cast him, but we don't have a way to pitch him if he's stuck in our hand. Just a little bit of a problem. We do if we take Teferi's protege. Portcullis Vine, not yet. Also, don't know if we care about Protege that much either. In blue green, it's it's gonna enable some things. I guess we'll grab it. We've got some twos. We're not super desperate for Prismite. That Kraken. Uh, Maybe, we, maybe we're going to miss it. I mean, we, we have a great 8-drop already, though, so... If it turns out that blue is the direction we want to be in, we'll, we won't miss it too, too much. But if we're in the white-green deck, we might miss that 2-drop a lot. So it's all just a question of, like, is Ugin good enough to pull us away from just picking good aggro cards. I mean, you don't draw them every game, right? But in blue-green, you would. Not really seeing much blue. The nice little Daybreak Charger here, though. I think we'll grab that over Staunch Shieldmate. All those cards totally fine. I like the Charger a little more, I think. White seeming to be open. This card is not playable. We'll just grab a Prismite. Might play it, might not. And not much going on here either. I guess we'll take a Scoured Barons in case we end up uh, wanting to splash black. We could do that with a Cultivate in the deck. And Lofty Denial or Sanguine Indulgence. Both kind of unexciting cards. I guess we'll take the Denial. I don't think we're going to splash for Sanguine Indulgence. I guess we'll take one there, though. The card has fallen down a little bit. I don't think it's quite that good. Okay. Uh, Falconer Adept. If you could put some 1-1 one -one counters on this guy, it would... Or this gal. It would uh, be pretty nice. Tutelage. Do not looking like we're a tutelage deck. I think it might be a bit late to try to switch to that. Hunter's Edge probably edges out the Adept. Since we've got the, the plus one, plus one synergies, removal is pretty important. Adding a power and toughness to your creature is quite good. And then there's a Glide Master and a Megalodon, which could be all right as well. But I think we'll just take... I think, I think we'll just take the green card 
Even though we didn't end up with too much green last pack, I think our deck wants to be base green. Kind of a weird spot. Another edge. Rain of Revelation. Hooded Blightfang. This is a big time beater. It's nice. Uh, it'll sit there and help you get to Ugin mana too. Deathbloom Thalid. Uh, another Hunter's Edge, Rain of Revelation. There's a lot of good cards in this pack. I don't know if we can abandon green and white at this point and move into black. And I'm hoping that since we cut green early, we'll see it come this way. So I think let's take the Hunter's Edge. I think it's the best card for our deck right now. And I'm looking at Ugin as maybe just not being a card we're going to play at all. All right, Colossal Dread Maw. Pretty good. Cultivate Land of War Visionary if we are going to do the Ugin thing. It's a nice six drop to have. Chorister is also pretty good as like an early play that maybe we can buff. Um, but again, let's just stick to green. Ghost Light, not bad. Rain, another rain. I mean, somebody's somebody's getting hooked up with uh, with those. But I think based on what we have, Dreadmaw is the card for us. And yeah, I mean, we could just take this four four card, or we could take Meteorite. Meteorite, maybe kill something, help ramp us. I think Ascension's more powerful though. And then these black cards, this is where black starts to fall off a little bit. The two drop is not great. Paying three mana to get to the second toughness is not very good. And then the imp is okay as well, but it doesn't do a whole lot. And then glutton dies to a lot of things. So yeah, I like ascension here. I'm not really seeing the control deck pass us by, so we don't feel too, too badly. There's a shock here, which is cool, um, but we're not red, so I guess we're gonna let that go. So we either take the shield mate, we could take the empath to search for Dreadmaw, that's a bit slow, uh, or we could take Ranger's Guile, but it doesn't do a plus one, plus one counter thing, so I think we just want the shield mate here. I don't know if we're going to get to play Ugin. Which would be kind of a bummer, but... Okay, we could splash this. I wouldn't mind doing that with Cultivate and the Black Duel. So either that or we take this Dilophosaur, which doesn't have much synergy with what we're doing. So yeah, let's let's try to splash Twin Blade Assassins. Uh, the Mauler's pretty good with uh, Conclave Mentor. It's becoming a 5-5 five, five the turn you play it is pretty sweet. And we need fours. Not really looking like a Rise Again deck. But yeah, let's take the Mauler. And now green not green just not open, unfortunately. Not and white not open either. Well, this pack's kind of weak on, on balance. I guess there's a little bit of blue happening. Tide Skimmer, pretty good. Yeah, let's take it. I don't think we're going to end up blue, but who knows. Clean Glide Master, good two drop. Late game utility. Or we could take the Vine and uh, let's try to block people. I don't really like that, though. Blocking, pretty bad. Village Rights, not really what our deck is trying to do. So, yeah, let's grab the Glide Master. And sure, Titanic Growth can do some work. I'll take it. Still don't think we're blue. Oh my goodness. Maybe we're blue. Super late rain. Tranquil Cove. Sure, might, maybe we can splash. Uh, yeah, we can take a Guile now. We may not play it though. 
We already got Titanic Growth. We really want Feet of Resistance with our Conclave Mentor. I guess, I mean, we could just abandon white if we really start seeing great blue stuff. We do have a Glide Master and a Skimmer. I don't think we're playing Dilophosaur. Or, I mean, or we could abandon green or something. I don't know. I don't think we can abandon green. It's just... We don't have a lot of it, but what we do have is pretty nice. Especially if we're, we're going to try and do the Ugin thing. We need the ramp. Island doesn't matter. Okay. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Not much for us. Another edge. Which is becoming less and less of a card we actually need. Because uh, we already have two. Rookie mistake, crab, both pretty pretty uninspiring. No ramp, no plus one, plus one counter stuff aside from the edge. So I guess we'll take it. It's a lot of four mana removal, but... We're not an Archfiend Vessel deck. We're not a Pestle and Haze deck either, I don't think. This card has been just okay. Valor Steed is not a card we want to take early. So, yeah, take the removal and hope we can make use of it. Ooh, well, there's a card we would like to play in our plus one, plus one counter deck. Basri's Acolyte. A little tight at the four drop slot, but we do have the early support for it, or we take Visionary as a way to draw cards and ramp. Hmm. It's tough, you know, having Ugin makes me want to take the Vig. So maybe we should... Plus now we've got Twin Blade Assassins. We might want to splash. Seems like we kind of need it. Uh, not much for us here. Two minute two two, which is okay. We'd play it instead of, or in addition to, or instead of Prismite maybe. Uh, Devotee. Yeah, we've got three Hunter's Edges to maybe make this work okay second devotee okay hmm strap going a little bit sideways here I guess we'll just take another one. There's a meteorite for the splash. We are going to need a little bit more help if we're going to do a three color thing. And I don't think we can be blue. Been less and less impressed with Enthralling Hole. We could play Track Down. But, yeah, all right, let's take Devotee, I guess. Chorister. Oh, this deck's a mess. Uh, <laughs> Chrome Replicator, yeah. Archer. We don't really need another four. Are we just back to playing white stuff? Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, there's a Gourmand. Double Visionary Cultivate. We could maybe do it. This card is pretty hard to beat. Oh, we don't really want to splash it, though. Don't really want to splash these guys either. Maybe it was a mistake to take these guys. Uh, Warden of the Woods. Whenever it becomes a target of a spell or ability, you may draw two cards. Six drop. Yeah. Could rock a six. Sure. Bronto. Maybe. 
Where are the pride malkins? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I guess we're taking Brontodon. It's a big old body. We passed on the Basri's Acolyte. If we had the Acolyte in the deck, we'd probably want the Chorister here, but Bronto seems good. I think we're going to get rid of these Devotees. I don't think that's going to be good enough. Mm, Mutt's not very good for us. None of these cards really do anything. I'll take the Grub, I guess. Haze. Yeah, may, maybe there's still a black green deck we can build, but I just don't think we have quite enough going on. We would have, we'd have almost no two drops if we did that. Uh, we're not playing blue just for that guy, so we'll take a shield mate. Containment priest, that's not bad. We'll probably cut prismite. Uh, sure, whatever. All right, so I don't know. Maybe it was a weak table. Maybe we misread some signals. Kind of seemed like white was open for the first pack, and then it kind of dried up, and then black was open for a little bit, but we never really got we were a little too too late. I guess blue was the color that we maybe missed out on. Maybe that that. Uh, Big Kraken thing was we were supposed to uh, move in at that point. We saw it, but I mean, we had the Conclave Mentor and the two drops. Wanted to kind of stick with that, so that's what we did. Uh, short Sword. I guess we don't need Staunch Shield Mate because we don't have any good ways to put counters on it, do we? Aside from Hunter's Edge, which isn't the worst. One, two, three, four, five, six. Could play Prismite. Could play Ranger's Guile. We don't really have any tricks. How many creatures? 14, though. So we got three of these. I think we have enough ramp to do Ugin. Don't need more than... One swamp, I don't think. Seven, eight. So we want to play another planes. And that's 40. 17 land. 14 creatures is a little bit low, though. A little bit low. Maybe we cut the guile and bring in the prismite. Not great, uh, not a great thing to do, but, or we play, or we do play the shield, man. I mean, that does block things a whole lot better, but not having that acolyte kind of burns us there. All right, well, we'll try it like this. I don't have super high hopes for this deck, but if we can cast Ugin, we'll certainly be winning some games. We go first, we got our colors and some stuff to do, so we're, we're good. Let's go for it. Start with the dog. Since we're on the play, flashing in priest isn't gonna have much value for us, I don't think. But having a vigilance creature is is pretty nice. It's a cool pet. Looks super mean. All right. Next turn we can flash in priest. Shock. Very good on the draw. Nice. Ooh, nice, we get to double spell here. Let's Chorister and pass. They've got the counter spell, it looks like. So I think we want to flash in this right now in case they do have it. It opens it up to shock or whatever, but honestly we'd rather them kill that than the Chorister. Furious Rise doesn't do anything yet. So we'll just play our hand out. Don't want to see a dragon fire on this mauler. That would hurt us quite a bit. 
But uh, the oak we're going to be able to kill. So that's going to be quite nice. So, um, if we put the counter on the mauler, it'll become a 4-4 four, four, and then a 5-5. Five, five. I think we'd rather put it on the priest since the mauler is going to become a 4-4 four, four anyways. And now our mauler gets bigger. Yeah, I like this. This is working. Opponent kind of dirtled. They didn't have a, they didn't have a creature very early on. I think we just with everything. We can pump up Chorister. I don't want to expose. Myself to a two for one if they've got a two they've got the blue bounce spell uh on the mauler that would be pretty backbreaking. If they've got the uh if they got the dragon fire, that would be annoying as well. I think we just attack with everything. This is pretty awkward for them. If they want to trade with the priest, then our mauler gets bigger. We pump this guy. They go to two here. Their wolf is not happy. Nice. All right. Well, good showing from the deck so far, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's nice that we can play an offensive game. All righty. Opponent goes first. Got some two drops. We'll, t we'll try it out. We need to draw some lands, but at least we've got stuff to do early. Both our colors plus the black splash, which could come in handy later. Opponent not messing around here. Uh, yeah, we'll give him Prismite to trade with. And then next turn, maybe we can play Makeshift Battalion. Sure. In for two. Fortunately, we are drawing some lands, so lucky for us. Unfortunately, this battalion doesn't block this hobble fiend very well, so we'll, we'll be taking another two this turn if our opponent wants to do that thing. I do. We'll go with no blocks. Immolator. Ooh, that's good. That's a good one. Well, I'm down to offer up the trade here, and we can follow it up with a Mauler, which will become a 4-4. Opponent takes the damage, obviously. I uh, will still play the Mauler here. If they have shock, this is so good. Uh, they get shock, but battalion, sack him, later kill Mauler. Still two for two, but it's a good one. Uh, next turn, we've got titanic growth to keep Mauler alive. So we want to just keep pressing the attack. Okay, well, they're going to kill it with uh, emulator, which is totally reasonable. Assuming they're going to do that now, I would think that that's, that's what they want to do. Yeah. Yep, that's a just an excellent card. Uh, i got to remind myself what this card does. Put a page counter. Uh, scry one, pay two, you draw a card instead, and if there's four or more, exile, gain four. So they're going to spend some mana and uh, 
try to draw some extra cards. All right, cool. Five lands for us. Let's get in there. Try to use Titanic Growth to uh, win this battle here. They might just take it. They're ahead on life. Maybe we don't need to do this, because next turn we've got the, the six drop that's hard to kill. I'm going to take it. All right, we'll pass. We've got Priest plus Titanic Growth if we need, need, need to do that. Solemn Simulacrum. Pretty good. Finding a swamp, I would imagine. Now they can do all sorts of stuff to us. We get Gormanded. In for two. I guess we'll just take it. And uh, play Priest. And play a Warden. Ooh, we could fight. We could fight, couldn't we? If we fight the Simulacrum and they sack it, we get in for six. If they have Shock, we get blown out. I think we just get the Warden down. It should make life pretty difficult for them. And I mean, Simulacrum dying draws them a card, so it's not a great use of our Hunter's Edge. Oh yeah, all right. Is this card good? We're about to find out. Oh, nice draw for us. So steal six. Oh, this is gonna be so good. So, punch and then they do get to trade their simulacrum for our battalion if we want to make it bigger which is not great for us maybe we should have put the counters on the battalion they take nine at that point though down to five and they're just dead next turn. I think we just do it. They can gain four off the tome next turn. They can go up to nine. They need to find a blocker though, and we have titanic growth to push through lethal. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Here comes the gain four. They'll probably get to draw a card too. Yeah, that's that's not bad. So for four total mana, they scry three, draw a card, gain four life. That's that's pretty good. I mean it's over multiple turns and stuff, but yeah. Okay, so, okay, well, this probably does it. Nice. All right, well, didn't have much faith in, faith in the deck, but it's, so far it's doing okay for us. Haven't seen our boy Ugin yet. Pono goes first. Uh, yeah, got some two drops and stuff, so sure. Start with our dual land. See what they do. 
Maybe we just go Pegasus to ensure that we can attack them. Or maybe we go... Containment Priest to... I mean, they're probably going to have a card they can blanket. So I think we'll go Pegasus. Plus, if we get to, to eat something, if we get to eat a two toughness creature and put a counter on this, that's pretty good. Okay, they have that thing. Guess we'll just go Prismite. <laughs> Ooh. Swing for one. They can come at us for two. We get to come at them for three, though. And we've got Titanic Growth back up at that point, so I think the, the attack is good. In for three. It's more than two. Okay. Take it. Well, Daybreak Charger makes this easy. We had a decision to make, now we don't. We'll just play Daybreak Charger, pump up Prismite, and uh, get him. Uh, we got Priest on the Flash. If they come in with Enforcer, we probably just take it. Not too afraid of that card. We have the removal spell for it as well. Okay, they're not going to. So we'll flash in Priest here. Hopefully they don't have the counter spell. And now we have a choice. We could Hunter's Edge the Chorister and not have to deal with it and make our flyer bigger, or we can Hunter's Edge the Enforcer and have a bigger Daybreak Charger. I think I like making our flyer bigger. I'm trying four mana for one, but... Oh, gross. Okay. Could have played around that by using Prismite. Yeah, that's real nice for our opponent. That's a that's a swing for sure, because now they they can uh They've got a bigger uh, chorister. I mean, we've got a bigger flyer too. That's it's not nothing. They're twelve, so we're okay. But that was a, that was a swingy turn. If we'd gotten away with that cleanly, that would have been pretty sweet. Battlements gets bigger. Okay, we can kill this guy if we want. Does that have reach? No. Do we want to kill this guy? I suppose we do, it just gets bigger and, and more and more impactful. We don't get to play our Bronto though, but... Oh, we do, because we have Prismite. Sick. Yeah, Prismite. Get him. <laughs> and, yeah, we still have no good attacks. Just two in the air. Seven out of eight mana. Getting kind of close. To the big man. They've got 5-5 five, five lifelinker dude coming at us now, though. I 
thinking about it. We're going to put, uh, I think, Daybreak Charger and uh, Prismite in front of it. Although they don't have to pump it at that point. So I guess we got to do Daybreak and Containment Priest. Oh, no, they don't even have to pump it. They're still gross. Gross. Alrighty, I guess we'll trade the ba uh, Bronto then. Got two. So this is gonna get plus three. So this should be enough. It's our both our guys. But there was no way to to not have that happen. Ooh, we get our own. Nice. Big life swing for the opponent there, though. Top of our deck, though. Could be an Ugin, could be a Dreadmaw. We got some big stuff to do. Forrester comes in, we'll just double up again. Opponent says no. Well, we're going to hold ours back also. We'll just keep plugging away. So now we can, if we draw Hunter's Edge, we can make this a 4-4 four, four and use Hunter's Edge to kill theirs. Opponent's six cards in hand. Cultivate, not the worst. We would like to see bigger things, hopefully. Are we at the point where we can double pump? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we can. They might have swift response, though. Though they would probably... Would they have used it by now? I mean, we can still just block their guy if they... Can kill ours. Do it again just to gain extra life. Wow, they, do, they don't have it. Okay, nice. Maybe they've got uh, enthralling hold, but then they would have to uh, have double blue. Oh, they're missing black. All right. Well, that makes sense now. Hey, Annabelle Wilson. Thanks for the follow. How you doing today? Thanks for coming by. Appreciate it. Dreadmaw for us. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're just gonna keep swinging with both of our creatures. Or just the chorus here. We got 5, 10, 11, 12. So we have enough to pump once and then cast Dreadmaw. <clears throat> Just don't want to get. Uh... Oh, now they can start tapping it down. That's a thing, because they've got patrician. I see. I see. Let's go to attacks then. I suspect that's their plan. Yep, okay. No. Let's play a big guy. Dub here would be pretty gross. I 
Not sure what they're uh, hanging on to. Sweet artwork on this one, obviously. Some Twilight stuff going on there. Okay, Visionary's not the worst. So this is a 4-4. Four, four. So together with Enforcer, it could kill Dreadmaw. But I imagine they want to use Enforcer to tap our Chorister. So I think we're getting in with Dreadmaw. And probably our Flyer as well. We're going to tap the Dreadmaw. Okay. Jeez, I mean, they could have... Uh, a bunch of stuff now that they've got black available they might have uh, eliminate for the chorister we're gonna get in with it though we're gonna get in with the pegasus no well if we get in with everything they're taking minimum four down to two but then they're gonna gain some life back so I think we'll just get in with the one theirs and are they gonna give it death touch with the um, black removal spell I mean I guess we'll just I don't want to not have visionary mana especially if we're about to get blown out by that trick looks like we are sure but yeah I mean whatever We're st they're still a little bit hamstrung on mana, tapping things down. Defiant Strike. Bummer. One of my visionary. So if we get in with both, what happens? They just take one, <laughs> so that's not worth it. Because they can attack us back. I mean, they can't really, but... Hmm. Ugin, my man. Yep. Even a fight spell would be alright here. It could turn the corner on us. Interesting. Do we want to get in with everything? We lose a dog or a daybreak charger. Do I lose both actually? And then we have a, th a four four mauler. If we send just the dog in, get a four four back out of the deal. Then we can start attacking with the four four. I don't like just throwing away one of our creatures though. We're not that close to killing them. They've gained a quite quite a bit of life here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Well, we know what was in their hand the whole time. They didn't have uh, black mana. Land is not helpful. Not helpful. If 
14 cards left. A couple fight spells in there still. Twin Blade Assassins in there. But pretty much have to draw Ugin, I think, at this point. Twelve cards left for our opponent. Could go could go all the way. Probably won't though. In for two. And Freebooter. So if we do draw Ugin, we could just exile every... Oh, God, we did. Oh, man. All right, if we just exile everything four or less... Do we get to... We don't get to keep anything because we don't have Prismite. So this kills everything they have, and we have a Colossal Dreadmon and Ugin. They can tap our Dreadmaw. So we won't get to attack with it this turn. So we might as well go to... And I think that's better than plus two. Shoot the Enforcer down at this point. They've got a pretty significant board advantage on us. So we get in for two. Okay, cool. But then, then we don't get to get in at all. So fair enough. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. Sure, that's a fair card. We go first, and we've got a curve out draw here, if we can find a three or another two. So we're pretty psyched. Making the Corister of potentially a 3-3 three, three with this off of Conclave Mentor and, and killing something could be a pretty big game. No two for the opponent. Excellent. Love it. We don't have a three, though. All right, well, they have at least an inventory, but they're going to need a creature. Huh. Guess we want a mauler instead, then. They could have the counter spell. I suppose we'd rather Mauler get countered. That's a good that's a good lofty denial. We could have played around it with Containment Priest. Maybe we were, maybe we should have. I just don't, I don't assume that people have it. I'm aware of it, but maybe on Arena, I should assume that people have it more. People do like to play with counter spells. Well, kill, killing a vine here isn't the best, but getting a 3-3 lifelink is pretty nice. So let's, let's do that. Or we just go double two drop. I think we want the lifelinker though. Plus this is another card draw for them, this saves them a bunch of damage. Now we're really clocking. It's two good creatures they milled over there. Double trigger. Gonna opt me as well. No. Five, six, seven, eight. So we'll just uh, 
we'll just hit them for five and play two more cards, I guess. That's not lethal this turn. Pass with a priest up. 20 cards left. They shouldn't be able to get us this turn. Accumulated knowledge or whatever might do it. No, nope. no. Nope. All right, nice. So, power and toughness. Attacking, it's good. I'm telling you guys. Continuing to be on the play is nice. Um, Ugin <laughs> is not going to be great here, but if the game goes long, we might get to cast him. We're certainly not going to mulligan a hand with a one drop and two good two drops, and now a great three drop. Not a great three drop, but a three drop though. Um, we're not gonna Angelic Ascension. I think a little risky to do that. But I mean, now we can't really attack through that. Yeah, maybe we do it. I'm gonna do it. Red doesn't really have a good way of dealing with a 4-4. White's got swift response, but the card seems to be down in a lot of pick orders. I haven't seen much of it. If our opponent passes with three mana up, we're going to be a little bit worried that they have it. They could just use it now, though, as well. In for three. We'll take three. We're ahead. Just a weird. All right. Charge. Make it six. Oh shoot, didn't mean to do that, but I guess trading weird for battalion is fine. Three drop for three drop. If they don't do it, they go to six. I didn't mean to do this attack, but it's actually fine. And we might have a trick too, so it puts them in a, a bit of a, an awkward position where they may not want to make the block, but we're, we're okay with the trade. Keep them on the back foot. But I think the most correct play was to not not attack there. The next turn we get the counter on it. And maybe it just gets right through. Not this time, most likely. If we get to Ugin, something's gone horribly awry, but then Ugin will save us. So they could go to three and trade with Daybreak Charger. Which makes our next attack lethal, so I like that play. Swift response here would change all that, but they haven't shown it to us yet. Shock probably on the priest. Or dragon fire on the priest. Both make sense to me. Or that, yeah, that's fine too. I mean they still they still go to uh, three and are dead next turn. Okay, well they had them both. Yep. So Unless we draw a pump spell, we, we won't get to uh, kill them with this creature. They could have slag here. No. Okay, so a bit of a race. We got a 12 next turn. They can hit us for a bunch. But Let's see, 4-4 four, four is good enough. So 
So this is five unblockable. You just trade with this. It's a nice little interaction, like from M20 with uh, Goblin Smuggler and uh, Lavakin Brawler, I think it was called. So, we can't block the Kerr. Uh, this is five, six, seven. We go down to five. We're not dead to anything, so I think we'll just take it. They pretty much just have to have the removal for the 4-4. Four, four. Looks like they might. Oh, they got a blocker. Oh, that's pretty good, too. Okay. Okay. So now if they draw a land, we're dead? So they can make Subira unblockable? No, it's another target creature. So we're not dead. Uh, do we want to get in with both of these? We're going to have Mauler back to block. This forces them to trade Daybreak Charger, which I kind of like. Because they have to block the Angel with the Pegasus, and then they can trade away the Daybreak Charger. We play a 4-4. Four, four. If they can remove it, we're just not dead because they won't have enough mana. If they draw land, we're not dead. I think this is correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It does stop us from playing Ugin next turn is the only thing, I guess, but I don't think that's going to matter. Even Sure Strike, I don't think, does it. With a land, maybe it does. Unblockable. Sure Strike to four. Five, six. No, it'll still be six, right? It's plus two, yeah. So the second ability on this card is one in a red, discard your hand, tap that. Whenever a creature with power two or less deals combat damage to the opponent, you draw a card, right? Yes. Okay, they did, they did find the land. I guess double sure strike, but they don't have enough cards for that. In with both. If we don't block the cur, we could be dead. It would go up to seven. So we have to block the cur. And our opponent knew it. Nice play by the opponent. We could have could have made that mistake for sure. All right, we're on the draw. We've got, I think, what's well, a keepable hand. It, it's a bit land heavy, but one into two into two drop plus equip is a decent start. And if the more lands we see, I mean, we might be able to cast one of our big things. Three drops, nice. Let's go with the dog on two in case it gets countered. Plus it holds the sword a little bit better. Dogs holding swords. Um... That Hunter's Edge changes some things. So if we play, if we go short sword and attack, they could double block. We get to take their flyer down, which is, I think, good for us. And then next turn, we could Hunter's Edge turn something into a 4-4, kill something of theirs. And then the turn after that, we, uh, we could play Makeshift Battalion. Or we just play Battalion right now and don't bother attacking. And then, you know, Hunter's Edge of this, but we don't get the extra value from it. I think I like getting the extra value. They may not want to block. I guess we could have done this with mana up. That would have made them less likely to go for it. They are going to go for it. We're going to take the flyer down. We don't have good ways to, uh, to block flyers, of course, because we're in green. So... Tutelage. Okay, so opponent's plan is to not die. So we're gonna have to try to kill them.
So, I mean, we didn't realize their plan was tutelage, otherwise we would have played this a little bit differently. Wouldn't have made that attack at that point, but sorry. We are still beating them down. And we'll put the sword on the battalion so that it can block a little better. Dragonfire, hold. Ooh, good. Good, good draw. Good draw. Alright, well, we could snipe their larcenist and maybe get to attack them back. They will get an extra trigger. We might be dead to this tutelage. We're going pretty low here. And they might have a removal spell for this guy. Which would be pretty bad, but... You know. You gotta do what you gotta do. I wouldn't have attacked with the Mentor, I don't think. I think they're closer to killing us with... With kindness than with, uh... Damage, but... I don't know what's in their hand. You go to three. So, yeah, I mean, Ugin off the top, right? For the win. Nope. Oh, it would have been. Would have been. Um, yeah, probably not much we can do now. But definitely not if they're going to do that. Yeah. Flooded out a bit. Tutelaged. And actually just dead to creatures, too. Ugh. Some, just a awkward uh, draw for us. We're we're dead all the different ways here. So we'll uh, see you later. Nice game for the opponent. Not great for us there. Got kind of got rocked. That's more like what I thought our deck was gonna be like. Alrighty, we're going first. Don't like our hand all that much. We've got an Ugin with no ramp. Our first spell's a three drop. Titanic growth that doesn't do much. This is a tricky one. We can't even cast Brontodon because we don't have double green. I think it's a mull for me anyways. Keep this one. This one's much better. We've got a nice two into a uh, three into maybe a trick later. And man, maybe we'll draw four, who knows. No. Um, are we gonna play Barons? Probably not, we probably wanna hold up Ascension as a, a trick. Let's get in with uh, Battalion for four here. Don't wanna give them the Mentor, obviously. And if they go for some removal, we can uh, Ascend. You can think about ascending end of turn, but against blue, it's a little bit scarier. Ooh, but we might do it to eat the Sphinx. Let's see if we can. They could counter it. They could have a pump spell as well. But I'm assuming they are not expecting us to have this, so... It's kind of cute. Sweet. And I mean, if they didn't have the pump spell there, they certainly don't have it here. So we get to attack. Uh, I mean, they could play a non-creature and eat uh, trade with Mentor, but. Scry one, sure. On the bottom. That's nice. Well, we do have lethal, kind of. This 
can give itself flying. Now it can't though. Take three, no, f no problem. Uh, well, we can't really get in with Mentor. It just trades with Glide Master. We're better off uh, just putting them to one. in with the three one uh, if we block here they won't have blocks on our flyers so I think we should and if they have to spend mana to save that thing then they won't have the ability to jump something so it seems like the only only thing they would really get us would be uh, unsubstantiate on the token Okay, Frost Breath, sure. Sure, sure, sure. It's pretty nice. Okay, yeah, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, well, this is going to be close. <clears throat> They've got another turn of not getting attacked for two in the air. And we're flooding out. Charger just trades for their 2 2. That's not very good. So, I guess we just pass. Scry 1 is nice here. Make sure they hit some action. One on top. They had something they liked. Alright. This is going to be real close. Another fight spell. Capture Sphere. Yep. Yeah. Oh boy. We're in 7. 7 mana. 1 away from uh, Ugin mana. They don't have a flyer, so they can't deny us too hard here. And we'll throw the sword on the Dreadmaw since the Daybreak Charger can trade with whatever already. Scrying again. Bottom. So they didn't find something they liked. Don't know if we want to attack here. I guess we do, because it makes it harder for them to absorb the trample damage from our, our dino. And takes away a mana source, which doesn't matter much right now. They're going to scry upkeep, try to find something for this dino. Bottoming. What did they find? Nothing. All right. Heck yeah. Oh, geez. This, uh, this is not a uh, game-winning hand. Neither is this, really. But I guess it's a keep. We've got two two-drops we can play. A uh, couple of fight spells I think are better than a 3-3. Three -three. If we do find the, uh, the forest, we'll be all right. Short sword, not bad. Start with the Pegasus. The Charger gives it uh, plus two power anyway, so we're not really losing any damage. But this way we know we get through. And we have a way to deal with that, so that's okay as well.
I think we need to kill the uh, double striker. And since we're forced to trade with this thing anyways, we're going to attack if they want to trade for a two drop. It's we don't love it, but you know, they have that uh, they have that choice either way, so rather attack them. And if they don't want to trade, get the damage. So, I mean, we're down to one creature. They got four cards in hand. We have a removal spell that's contingent on us having this creature not be dead. And it looks like we're going to be just big enough to handle this. Four, four of theirs. Now we're completely out of gas, so... Maybe we didn't even need to do that. I mean, we're racing them in the in the air already. Yep, that's pretty good. What the heck does this do? Okay, yeah, I guess we're just dead. Uh, could we have beaten that? Let's see. We would have gone Mentor, Land, and we would have gotten to a 5-7, which is still... Not quite enough to uh, take down the <laughs> super broken mythic rare. Whenever this attacks or blocks, and it's got vigilance. Like, okay. All right, well, we'll let them have fun. I mean, we could draw another Hunter's Edge. That would be enough to take that thing down. We could draw Ugin, the game could go longer, so we don't need to concede, but we're almost assuredly going to be dead here. We will double block. We have no recourse here. And if they pump spell, then even better. I mean, if they trade it off for the 4-6, like, now we're... We're not doing too badly. The scavenging ooze is going to get huge, though. <laughs> a lot of rares they've got there. We're not going to attack. Obviously, they can just make the ooze into a 4-4 four -four here. Six mana though. We got Dread Maws we can draw. We've got another Hunter's Edge. Oh gosh, that's pretty good. This card is actually maybe pretty playable because a lot of people are rocking short swords and even Prismites are playable. It seems to be good against the type of decks that, uh, that I do. Alright, well, even if we're gonna. We need to draw some visionaries here if we want to win. Because drawing a land, then drawing a land, then drawing Ugin is not fast enough to beat the clock that they have going. So visionary into visionary into Ugin would be what we want. There's a start. Okay. All right. And... Okay. Well, if there's an Ugin on top, we might be talking. And that ooze can keep getting bigger. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we don't want to lose the visionary because if we do draw Ugin, that could be our way to get out of this. We do have to nuke the whole board. Five. But I mean, come on. U Ugin would be a pretty sweet ending to this game. We just got uh, hurt by that uh, whatever that guy's called. Elder Gargaroth. Hopefully they don't take down the Visionary. I think we gotta make this block though. Save ourselves a little bit of time here. Gain some life.
How big can this get? Two more. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. It can become a 10, 10. I don't think we can even attack then. It can become maybe a 12, 12. If they draw a forest, right? I could, most, most can be as 11, I guess, but, but then uh, Pegasus finishes us off, so we can't attack. One more turn. One more turn to draw him. No shame in losing to uh, Elder Gargaroth and Scavenging Ooze, though. But got the out. Could be right here. 1 in 24 chance. So if we take 8 down to 4, we're dead to this next turn, so we do need to make this block. And... Uh. Well, gives us another turn. Might as well play it out. However slim. 1 in 23. I like those odds. Yeah, that works too. One, two, three, four, five. So we do want to put the sword on it to gain a little bit more life. Creature up the top, or Ugin, or we're dead. It's a creature. One in twenty one could happen. And now it's Ugin or Bust. Opponents holding a lot of cards in hand. Maybe they're playing around it. Cultivate, not gonna do it. Good game. And uh, you know, two mana two two is good. I think the game is in a good place for, for my enjoyment, draft-wise, when, like, two mana 2-2 two, is a good card. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's just non-stop nonsense with, uh, you know, blue and, and uh, red and black just taking over everything. Feels like the colors are a little bit better balanced this time around. Okay, so we flashed in the 2-2. Two, two. Could go Daybreak Charger and hit them for five, but I'd rather spend all of our mana, draw a card, get, get a little deeper into the deck, try to hit a land drop. We could double spell next turn. So we're going to jam for two and see what we draw. Short Sword's not a bad one. Uh, I imagine we'll just commit Daybreak and Prismite to the board if we can draw uh, a land. Although now... This kind of gets weird. Maybe we just go visionary and... I want to keep the pressure on, but yeah, maybe we just go visionary, draw a card, try to hit a land, play short sword. Next turn we get a hunter's edge and uh, maybe get through that way. Other otherwise, we're daybreak charger-ing to get in a little bit extra damage, cast sword, short sword. 
That's not the worst either, because then if we draw the land next turn, we could go Visionary Short Sword, or we could go uh, Hunter's Edge, again. same deal, and then Charger can actually attack through the Enforcer. Okay, I've talked myself into... Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. We have extra mana. What am, I, what am I saying, guys? This taps for mana. Okay, so what we'll do in that case, then, is... the, the Sorry, it's early. We're going to attack for four. Oh, sorry, four, not five. We're going to attack for four. Uh, and then cast uh, Prismite. I doubt they're going to take this trade. I mean, and if they do, that's okay, because it opens up the Visionary to potentially attack. We could save it with its Ascension, but no, I'd, I'd rather just get that thing off the board. Cast Prismite. Um, so next turn, we've got access to Hunter's Edge. We could have done it there as well. Um, our opponent's going to take a couple turns off here, so this is pretty good for us. So let's Short Sword equip on Prismite and cast Visionary. Beat down. And now the next thing they play needs to be absolutely bonkers good. Like a, a Bane Slayer Angel. Not to uh, jinx myself here, but like whatever their next play is it needs to be insanely good. Even Bane Slayer we could kill in a roundabout way with uh, by turning it into a 4-4 and then fighting it. It'd be a 3 for 1 in our opponent's favor, but sometimes you just got to get... Oh, no, 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 actually, Hunter's Edge is a punch card, so it actually would be uh, would just be a, a 2 for 1 for them, which is, I mean, if that's the worst that's happening to you with Bane Slayer, Bane Slayer Angel, then uh, you're okay. Okay, Sky Scanner is a little annoying. It does trade with the DBC here. Um, so we may just hold that back. Get in for three, cast Red Maw. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could pay for... <clears throat> we could pay for the the one mana off of a Lofty Denial. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll cast this first. Because um, then if they don't Lofty Denial... Oh, no, no, sorry. If they do Lofty Denial, then we can, we actually can't pay for it because it'll be four because we got Sky Scanner. Uh, are we willing to take that risk? Don't want to trade the, the Charger. Don't want a Hunter's Edge. So I suppose what we'll do then is is um, get in with uh, these two creatures. See what they want to do here. Are they going to feed of resistance? Okay, so now we have a decision to make whether or not we want to save the visionary. Uh, we could turn it into a 4-4, which is pretty sweet. Or do we just want to cast Treadmaw? We could also we could turn it into a 4-4 and Hunter's Edge this 2-2 out of the way, but I don't know that we need to do quite that much. We could just let this go. Uh, they go to 9. Then we have a 6-6 Trampler. I think, we're, I think we're actually just okay letting this go. Feet of Resistance, quite excellent, as as we know. This is a nice little situation here. When you've got two shrines out, this blue shrine becomes quite good. So, our opponent uh, could very well get themselves back into this game, but I do like our spot. Okay, that's pretty good for them, though. Okay, well, now we're probably just... Edging the uh, sky scanner out of the way. One, two, six. That so that would be lethal if we uh, if we can pop that off. Okay, well, now it won't be. Now it won't be. But um, we can make a visionary into a three power creature, and that'll put the they'll go down to uh, they'll go down to three if they don't. Uh, I guess they'll just trade with Prismite. Yeah. So they'll go down they'll go down to three. Uh yeah. So I think this is right. We definitely want to get this the Mistral Singer since it's got a potential to grow. So they're gonna get the trade on the on the might here. But they are going to three. Ow. 
and then we'll just hook up the uh, short sword. Probably onto the charger. Gets it out of the, it gets it past uh, like another one power creature, right? But I mean, I've seen a lot of cards here, so surely they can re they can remove one of our creatures. So this is gonna be a close game. So if they can deal with both, then uh, we're depending on how they deal with them. Ascension might uh, be a thing. Cultivate kind of a blank at the moment, but we can pick up a swamp with it and uh, be able to cast uh, Twin Blade Assassins if the game goes along. But I, I don't know if it's if we're in for that here, but we'll see. Opponents in the tank. Spark Hunter Masticor. So what does this do? Trades. Well, it blocks uh, something um, and gains indestructible. So they need to have a second removal spell, like a swift response or something. Hmm. I mean, and then of course we can just ascension, which might do it, and then we follow it up with the warden next turn. I think we we have to go for the kill here. The more time we give them... Ooh, they have the Tapper. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. That's okay, though. We, we couldn't... Uh, couldn't have done anything differently. But now we're... There's no point in ascending. We might as well just play... Target of Spell or Ability. Yeah, we might as well just play Warden, then. So then if they go to tap it down, we get to draw extra cards. Yeah, this game's actually going to be quite close. Of course, we do have Ugin in our deck, so... I guess, the, you know, like, the vast majority of the games we've have not... The, f you know, five-plus costed cards have not mattered at all, but... I suppose that is the benefit of having that uh, plan B in your deck, is that sometimes it can just get you out of a jam. See what our opponent wants to do. Capture Sphere, we'll draw two, no problem. Cool, okay, so they've got the Tapper Shrine, so we probably wanna destroy that with uh, Bronto. We can uh, turn the Warden into a 4-4. Four -four. We would like to ascend this turn cycle. So, where are we here? We've got four, five, six, seven. So we could Bronto for four and just destroy the Sanctum. This currently costs four to activate. Uh, or we destroy the Blue Sanctum and just make this cost five and then they have to, they're not drawing any extra cards. I kind of like that, I guess. Uh, well, we'll make them spend the mana. Tap the uh, daybreak. Okay. Uh, no attacks. What does this have protection from? Protection from planeswalkers. Okay. Well, we could destroy it. Uh, the the massacre actually. I kind of also don't hate that. Fortunately, we can't also conclave mentor. What if we cultivate first? One, two, three, four. Draw the, 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 the forest, put it into play. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. We then could Bronto, but not still not ascend. So I guess we just do this. Yeah. I think, I think this is what we want to do. But maybe the blue shrine is is what we were supposed to do. And to get around any counterspell shenanigans, I'm just gonna do this right now. Cause it's one of the ways we could get kind of out here is if they just have a random uh, cancel or rewind or something. Rather just make them find an interactive spell rather than give them the opportunity to have their removal be good and their counter magic be good. Okay, 
Well, a bit of a long-winded game on my part there, but uh, we did get to seven, so that's uh, pretty darn nice.